Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around 1 in 2 women and 1 in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information about sex with Emily, Whoa, um, sorry about that. Rocking out here. <laughs> I apologize. That's okay, man. We already had some technical difficulties when trying to start the show, and I apologize Sometimes for that. Sometimes there's technical difficulties. What can you do? It's you know, we try to plug in it. all these new things and hook you up with stuff. I gotcha. And, and we got to turn on Skype because we have a calling number that you can call in if you have any yeah. questions. Anything you want to share, questions, comments, advice that's that you what, need, will change your sex life. That's what screwed me up right now. <laughs> what? The having Skype? The, the yeah the Skype pot up four one five nine nine two seven three nine two, that's what we got for you. Got it. Okay, cool. So what's up with you? Um, I'm really good. I found someone. Um, my ex boyfriend's gonna watch my dog a few days a week, so we're gonna do we're gonna do split custody. <laughs> what? I feel really really good about it. Yeah, we're gonna what? do split custody. Like, not like. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh-huh. Tuesday, Thursday, but like whenever I need help, he took her for the last few days and he loves her and everything's good. And I feel like it's a big relief for me. So he's trying to sleep with you? No, he's not trying to sleep with me. We broke up years ago. He's not? I mean, sometimes. I ain't gonna watch. I ain't gonna watch no dog. He loves dog a dog. Unless he loves girl everyone. Loves her, honey. She's going a down lovable on me. little. <laughs> Sorry. I don't go down on him. I mean, I have historically, but not lately. So, um, but no, he likes her because we're all friends, which we you don't get. We're oh, all we're friends. All we're all buds. friends. We're all buds. It's cool. It's cool. Oh, good. Just going to give him a blowjob if you watch the dog. No, I'm not hanging. going to. Um, so, yeah. Today's show, I'll just tell you real quick. We're going to be talking about this is awkward moments during sex part two. We got to part one last week. They're really good. Like awkward, weird things that happen during sex. And we're going to talk about them. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. And we've also got mail. Your emails, some topics are women orgasming too soon, the first time having sex, feeling asexual, and breast play. And, um, yeah, I want to tell you about our Facebook event. Still going on. If you want three months free of Sex with Emily, all you have to do is like the Sex with Emily page. If you're already a fan of the page, you are still eligible 
and one person will be selected every day randomly to win three months free membership, unless it's changed a little bit. Not yet. We're going to change it soon. So we're going to we're trying to open it up where more people can. Great, more people get can free. get for three months because yeah. you like you love sex with Emily every day. I'm just telling you, it's a friends benefits. You become a friends benefits member. We're going to give that for free. But if you want to sign up right now and become a friends benefits member, you get the show every day. We will entertain your ass off, and we will give you the best sex information and the best relationship information out there that you need. And it's 15 cents a day, 4.95 a month, 4.95 a year, 49.95 a year. It's the best thing ever, best money you've ever spent. So what's going on in your life? What's up? My it's life is good. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. And um, <clears throat> things are good. I've been really like um, very overwhelmed lately, which is no surprise to anybody who knows me, it's, which is boring. There's lots of things going on like that, like just trying to have all the balls in the air and write all my stuff and do all my things and produce all the shows. And it's just it's really busy. It's hard to like. So there. But therefore, this is been my mo like i've always been that person who works really hard so i think i should start prioritizing relationships more just try that out and see if it works so like the guys i'm dating like maybe i should just i'm always going to be working i'll be a workaholic i'll always have my show and whatever and whatever comes from the show and the brand and whatever but i think like i realize i never prioritize being in a relationship because i always thought once i and you're the same way once i figured out work and whatever then i'll be in a relationship even though you've tried to be in a relationship i just feel like maybe i should like Try to be in a relationship with one of these dudes. Just pick one. Just pick one? Yeah. Well, be careful. What do you mean? Don't just randomly pick one. No, with one of the guys I'm dating. Yeah, just yeah. like... Yeah, might be know, fun. That's really my think it out. In fact, that's my friend told me. Well, she told me I should do that this morning, so I just, I'm just regurgitating what she said. I haven't processed That's yet. why you've been tripping out lately? No, I've been tripping out lately just because... Um, just because I think there's a lot coming out at me emails things to do projects very exciting i'm not my forte like i'm good at a lot of things but like in my wheelhouse not really like prioritization and figuring out what the most important thing to do is mm. at that moment <laughs> well it's a little stressful but um but things are good i've got lots of fun stuff going on this week parties going on a really fun party throwing oh and i'm going oming this weekend orgasmic meditation for all weekend and people are going to touch your vagina touch now the guys you're dating do they know about this oming yeah thing? they kind of know about it um, what are obliquely. Their thoughts on it? uh they think it's cool they think they it's do. a cool oh, thing what else are they I mean, what are they, they going to say no say? that sucks like yeah. you're a sex with emily like this is what you do you know right. like this is this is what you do so i get my clitoris rubbed by um strangers and that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. I think they're all down with it. Um, but there is a <laughs> I'm fun sure party. the strangers are. That's it's Some not part old, of that. It's not, old creepers. They're not old creepy people with ponytails. <laughs> but I'm excited for it because there are so many interesting people that we meet in the sex space, in the relationship space mm-hmm. on the show, who do a lot of interesting workshops yeah. and things. And I always say, oh, my God, I'm totally going to do your workshop. Oh, my God, I'm going to do that. And I've, like, read their books and done their things. But actually, So where's this uh, cult going to meet? What cabin? In Tahoe, but not in Tahoe <laughs> anymore. Now it's back in the city. Oh, it's back in the city. Yeah, so it's not in Tahoe anymore, which I kind of liked the That's whole, good. like, getting – no, I liked – at least you can run back to your house. It's true. I can still sleep at home. And then there's a big party that my friend's having, which I will not miss now on Friday night. Sweet. Sweet. So it'll be fun. And um, I'm yeah. going to be in Los Angeles on Friday. I'm going to miss the big party. Oh, you wouldn't have come anyway. But it was, it's going to be a really fun party. <laughs> That's cool. Are you excited for the VMAs? Do you think you'll... Uh... I am really excited for the VMAs. You went last year, right? Uh, no. I always go to the Grammys. Never been to VMAs. So this will be my... you have like tickets inside and all that stuff or are you going to be backstage? <sighs> tickets, I... Well, I'm going to do all the red carpet coverage and like talk to the stars and stuff like that. That's but, fun. Yeah. And then they're working on getting my tickets for inside. So we'll see how and it goes. And you're going to go all weekend? Which I don't really care about. I like doing the coverage and stuff like right. that. You work hard. And posting things online. <laughs> like I get, I get more excited about being the first person to get some coverage up online before anybody right. else. Right, which is... The, right. That's, that's what I get hyped off of. I, like, get, I like, get excited. Right. Yeah. You get turned on by that. I get turned on. Yeah. That's I hot. really want to have sex after I know that I posted photos of Nicki Minaj online before anybody else. Really? Do yeah. You? No, I, I like really get hyped. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. Well, I'll um I'll help promote your stuff if you want. Good. Thank you. I love doing that, you know. Um what else are you going to be doing this week? Um this that's week you happy. It's just a lot of yeah, I'm really happy. I'm good. Good. I'm just, you know, I, uh, again, 
I'm I'm also just figuring everything out. <laughs> I want to figure uh, it out with everybody. I'm trying, constantly trying to figure it out. Right? I just, I had a um, a friend of mine who I used to make fun of. She always like, she would always move to San Francisco, but every time she would date somebody in her old hometown, and then so she would end up moving back. Right. So uh, just recently, she was back in the city for a couple months, and then I go, oh, so when do you fall in love again and move right. away? And she's like, I ain't going to do that, blah, blah. I'm single. I'm living it up in the city. She gets a boyfriend, and then she goes, you're going to hate me, but I'm moving. But not back home, like halfway in between right, the city. Right, and right, right. I go, okay, fine. She's like, yeah, I'm going to move in with my boyfriend. That was just like a couple months ago. She hits me up today. I broke up with my boyfriend. Oh, God. So she's <laughs> moving back. It's so funny. I don't know if she's moving back, but she... There's so many relationship patterns that we mm-hmm. constantly repeat over and over again. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? Like, we talk, kind of talked about this the yeah. other day a little bit about, like, patterns and relationships and why people date certain people that they date and, and the whole... Yeah. Phase well, I don't know them. if I can even ask you this question, but... Uh, you can. Maybe you can maybe can answer it in some kind of way is what what kind of time period do you think it needs to be before you move in with somebody because you never you never live with anybody i've never lived with anybody which is, which is really insane i know isn't that weird and in fact like i have one of the guys i'm dating is always like that's fucked up emily like, that's <laughs> messed up like you're the one woman i know is never like you are there are no women like you like i've never lived with a guy you, you got to keep your options open that's why Dude, my options are open. They're like so open that they're too open and then I need to close them up right now. I've got a lot you, of options. Are you thinking that everyone's ragging on you about the way you live and that's why kind you're... Kind of. I mean, I've gone through all this transformation of, of, of... I've gone through this evolutionary process of my own psyche or whatever of trying to figure out what kind of relationship I want and what it looks like, which is mm-hmm. why I started the show. If you're just joining us... <laughs> You know, I started the show six years ago because I was seriously interested in relationships and dating and marriage and love and how you make a relationship work and how do you stay monogamous and challenging monogamy and all that stuff. And so I think I've gotten a lot more answers. I've gotten a lot more clearer over the last few years. I've interviewed hundreds of people. I've researched. I've read books. I've whatever. But I still think uh, for me personally, I, I, I'm trying to figure out, yeah, how it looks. Like, do I want to be with one person? Do I want to be in open relationship thing which we don't know that that always works and then do I want kids that's another thing I have to talk about like do I want kids do mm-hmm. I do I want kids I don't know I love kids love them where would they go like I have a dog and I'm freaking out about walking the dog <laughs> like my mom's like this is a good thing you don't have kids I'm like mom dogs are different though I mean kids you like you like at least them. you can you can keep them in one place. Dogs yeah. just jump around all over exactly, the place. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's different. My mom, but my mom tried to try to surmise from my dog situation that like, maybe I shouldn't have kids. <laughs> so there's all these questions that go through my head, but ultimately, I just want um, I just want to do this show. I, really I think like you're getting a lot of. Day. I think you're getting pressure from other people. I, I rag get... on you all the time, just in for fun. Right. I'm not serious because you, you love me. You can do whatever you want. Thanks, I honey. Love you. But you rag on me, but you think I'm getting pressure from other people. A little bit. I think I've always been, like, had pressure from society. There's mm-hmm. always that, like, you should be married. You should have kids. You should settle down. Mm-hmm. You should be with one person. We should all be with one person. We should all be monogamous. And I just don't think those messages, those messages never made sense, never ever, ever made sense to me. So, but you still can't help that that's what everyone else in society is doing, is getting married, mm-hmm. having kids, being monogamous. And so since it's something that I've always struggled with, it's just kind of like I'm getting to that point where it's like you just have to make decisions like about the kids and about the marriage. And when I'm dating guys who don't want that, and they want that, and I don't, mm-hmm. and then i got to break up with them. And so <laughs> you got to kick them to the curb. Kick them to the curb and then figure out if that's what I want eventually. So I'm just, you know, I'm just like everyone else trying to figure it out. Oh. Yeah. But you know exactly what you want. I do. I just need to find. But you just don't have time to date. I don't have time to date. And I don't really either. And... Uh, I just, you know, I be a lot more choosy on who I get in a relationship with. That's right. all. Yeah. I would love like to be in a, time. I would love to be in a relationship, but I just learned over the years, like, you got to be really choosy on who you're going to be exactly. in a relationship with. You don't want to make bad mistakes about people when you have to change yeah. the locks when you break up with them. Yeah. And I don't want to, I don't want to waste my time. 
You know, or somebody else's time. Right, exactly. That's the thing. And that's harder. But the older you get, you know yourself better. The older you get, you know Mm -hmm. yourself better and you don't. Like, I think, like, in my 20s, I would spend a lot of time with guys for two years. Even though, like, I knew they weren't Mm -hmm. the right, but you like, do you have two years then? You're like, two years, two years, two years, whatever. But then you get older and you're like, do I really want two years with this person? Like, if I know after two minutes or two months that they're not right, you just Mm kind of move through them quicker. Yeah. So there's that benefit. Yeah. Yeah. I have a news story that I want to share with you because we were talking about cheaters yesterday. Yes. And the day before. We're really (laughs) on on this new cheaters thing. And right when I was walking on my way here, um, I got a top 10 list of the the cities where the most cheaters live. Really? Yes. Okay. So So I have the list here. Uh I'm going to read them off to you. Number 10, Florida, Orlando. Okay. Number nine. Dallas, Texas. Okay. Number eight, Chicago, Illinois. Wow. Boston, Massachusetts, number seven. Lots of drinking there. Six, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Huh. Shocking. Uh, Number five, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Really? Really. I mean, probably this have nothing to do there. I bet you they used... What? How do you find it out? What? Salt Lake City, Utah, number four. The Mormons are cheating? I think if anything, the Mormons wouldn't cheat. Yeah. Okay. Top ten most cheating cities. Okay. Number three, and I know a lot of cheaters in this state. What state? Phoenix, Arizona. You do? Yeah, I know uh, quite a few cheaters. You know quite a few cheaters. I wouldn't think you'd be friends with cheaters. You feel like so anti-cheating. Uh, I can't explain how I know these people. Family. It's okay. No. Oh, sorry. Uh, and number one, Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine, it's like this big. How do you have the most? Because they probably had nothing to do there. There's no options. Just How do you get these? We're not in there, though. The, San Francisco's not cheaters because we don't commit. Because yeah. we're all like gay or whatever. We're just all just banging. Like, why be in a relationship? It is true that this city is perpetuates the whole Peter Pan never grow up thing. Yeah. Like, all my friends are like, not all of them, but a lot of them are sort of living that perpetual childhood. Which... The verdict's still out on that, if that's mm-hmm. a good thing or a bad thing. I don't think it's either or. It's just that San Francisco breeds a very unique set of people. Once we live here, I, they didn't breed me because I'm from Michigan, as you know. Yeah. But I've lived here for so long that I've become sort of adopted yeah. to San Francisco. All the wackiness of, of San Francisco. So wacky. It's so crazy. I love it, though. I love <laughs> it. I love all the things that I get to do here, like in all the parties and all the people and all the crazy stuff that my friends do like even burning man which is they're a bad festival. influence what my friends yeah why you'd be in michigan married with kids by now i should be in michigan married driving an <laughs> suv with a big diamond on my ring right now with three <laughs> children that's exactly where i should be yeah however i took a veer off that path but that's <laughs> and, and i wonder you know i don't think my life would be so much easier i'd probably be miserable yeah and cheating you'd probably be <laughs> divorced Although i don't cheat anymore but i'm a reformed cheater as i've often talked about on the show um okay so we we can get to some sex in the news but first we can get into the polls what's up with the polls here's the polls we put polls on our site twice a week we want you to vote asap <laughs> last week's poll was what's your favorite sex position simple doggy okay so reverse <laughs> cowgirl was seven percent missionary was 18 percent women on top 35 percent and doggy style 40 percent Duh. It's all guys taking the polls. I know. Go to sexwithemily.com. Dog, dog, doggy stuff, 40%. Guys love that. Because they can see your ass and they don't have to look at your face? Um, Why? Also, I mean, it, it's kind of less work, too, if you think about it. Other than the, uh, the woman being on top, like you're able to have a lot more energy. Right. It's like you're not putting all the weight of your body on top of right. a woman or like right, trying right, to keep right. most of the weight up and then going to pound town. Right, like going you to pound least. town. <laughs> Don't go to pound town. The after. rabbit. The rabbit, right. The so that drill. Was the, uh, <laughs> the uh, right, the rabbit, the power drill, the, um, what's it called? The jackrabbit. Okay, our new poll is what awkward it. moment do you experience the most in the bedroom? What is it? Because we are speaking about awkward moments today. Too drunk to get it up, orgasm issues, condom dilemmas, wardrobe malfunctions. What do you really? Think? Really? I want to know. Mm. What's the most awkward mm. moments to speak to, to happen to in the bedroom? Probably too drunk to get it up for you. 
No, not me. You ended up just yeah, that doesn't. I'm sure mean. with you drinking. Yeah, yeah, drinking um, you like. What, who cares about wardrobe malfunction in the bedroom? Well, like you can't get your bra off, or your pants off. Uh, that used to happen to me when I was younger. Can't, can't get, get that bra off, off man. It's so hard. What the hell? I know. Don't you just make it out Velcro or something? Just they Velcro should. it. They should, but then it'd be itchy and uncomfortable. But the bras are hard to get off. And then there's always that awkward moment where you're like, is he going to get it? Is he going to get it? Is he going to get it? Oh, God, phew, you got do you it. get upset when they can't get it no, off? No, not oh, at all. Okay. Like, maybe when you're younger, you do. Now I'm just like, here, you just do it. You just do it for them. You're like, it's fine. No, I don't get upset. I'm like, how do you know how my bra works? And some of my bras clip in the front. So how are you supposed to know that? That's easy. That's easy. Yeah. But how are you supposed to know? So you're fizzling back there, and I just want to be like, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm fine. I'll do it. I, we don't get all caught up in that. Um, okay. So that's our latest poll. So go take our poll now in sexthemily.com. And tomorrow, okay, tomorrow we're not here, but we are playing a classic Sex with Emily show, an episode that you're going to really, really enjoy about a lot of different things. And all the classic okay. episodes are also available. I had somebody, um, I don't know where they were. I think it was on Facebook. They hit me up. They wanted to find some of the classic episodes. I know. Yeah, so you go to sexwithelmy.com. They're there. They're there. Classic There's a special episodes. button, yeah. Yeah, and they're all classic episodes from January of this year. We don't have okay. anything previous, which we need to talk about. Okay. Because they're all gone, but they're not gone. They're just not there anymore. Okay. But we're going to put them back up. Okay, and also, um, if you become a Friends with Benefits member, as we've been talking about, if you go to the site and you like keep clicking, you're like, oh, I really want to see that video, but you can't, it's because you're not a Friends with Benefits member. So another thing that you could do when you become a Friends with Benefits member Friends with Benefits member is you get 30 minutes free of Fire TV, which is the FYRE TV. And um, when you sign it, and it's also if you've already become a Friends with Benefits member, you can still retroactively get that. So if you haven't yet, you have to register. But then right after you register and you have to put your credit card in, they will never charge you, but you got to do it. You launch the chat window and you tell them that you're with Sex with Emily and then they'll give you your 30 minutes free and you can just go surf porn and go crazy on that stuff if you want. <laughs> Do you want your 30 minutes free of our TV? I just go to your house. That's true. You never come over anymore. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. I, it's so hard to get around now. I don't have, I'm in the middle of not having a car. I, I just can't go anywhere. I, I mean, I take long I'll keep you walks. Up anytime. Yeah. Do you take long walks on the beach? No. No, the beaches here are so cold. I, know. I, I told you, I've never been to the beach here. My, have you ever been to Stinson Beach? No. I've, I mean, I've been, there's uh, Santa Cruz, California. Right. I mean, th- those are the closest beaches I've right. ever been to. Do you and like, like the beach? I love the beach. Oh, actually, they kind of have beaches. There's a place called Half Moon Bay that's not right. too far away. Half Moon Bay's not bad. Go there, but everything else is just it's cold true. and miserable. It's true. Stinson Beach was cold this mm-hmm. weekend. I was there. It's like north of Marin. It's yeah. a beautiful beach. Like, you drive over the Golden Gate Bridge, and there's all these switchbacks. You drive for an hour, and you got there, and it was 58 degrees nice. in summer. But um, I have a poll about America's cities as well. Okay. Your poll was the what? Top 10 cheaters. Okay. I've got Americans, America's sluttiest cities revealed. I thought we did that. In- this is a new one. Okay. Yeah. This is um, another study on this. Is the, new, the Think New York is the sluttiest city? Think again. Las Vegas? Keep guessing. A recent survey conducted by those clever Harvard alums at OkCupid okay at an online dating site, okay, you would rank the Pacific Northwest hipster haven, a.k.a. Portland, Oregon, as a nation's naughtiest city when it comes to casual sex. I thought San Francisco was number one. Yeah, that was a different poll. Seattle, Washington, Denver, Colorado, and Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania, also among the country's top ten most promiscuous cities. Promiscuous cities. Results were generated by, by telling the users who list casual sex among the types of relationships they seek on OkCupid. So it's from OkCupid. Okay. So it doesn't necessarily mean. It's whoever's going on their website. Exactly. Who's ever, but what, I got to tell you, like, everyone's going on OkCupid. Like, I, I talked to someone last night. Everyone's like, I'm like, where are you dating? And they're like, OkCupid. Yeah, I actually, I know only chicks that date on there. Yeah. A lot yeah. of cute chicks ch- date on there. You should go date on there. And the owner... Excuse mm-hmm. me. It's going to be on the show in a few weeks. Oh, really? Yeah, totally. Sweet. Totally sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, okay. Let's talk about Will and Jada. Pinkett, okay. Smith, separate. You saw my I'm tweet. I'm shocked. We saw your tweet, and it was breaking news. Uh-huh. I didn't know they were separating. They are always talking about more than any other couple, except for maybe besides Sting, mm-hmm. about how amazing their sex life is, and yeah. how they have sex all the time, and how they connect, and how they're so in love, and how they can't keep their hands off each other. Mm-hmm. What the hell is going on? Why are they breaking up? Not the sex is the only thing, but 
they're always talking about in their, these interviews that they're going to stay together and they're going to be together forever. Do you know why they're what happened? Uh, I there's there's but it's not really, even conclusive yet, right? Yeah, because uh, right before we started the show, um, there was a report that his son tweeted out that it's not true. But if it's it's been out in the open since early this morning, okay. Like, why hasn't Will Smith or Jada Pinkett Do come they tweet? out? Uh, I'm sure they tweet. Right. Or there's some outlet that they can go to and say, hey, this is not true. Right. Right? Right. Right, right, right. Believe me, the entire country is on the edge of already knows. Right. Uh, they've heard these rumors. And uh, if they haven't, if, if it's not true, then they should come out and say it's not true. Had you heard rumors before today? No. Like, uh, before today, it was like, oh, they're the, you know, they're the perfect couple. Oh, they always talk about how happy they are. It just bums me out. That they broke up? Kind of, for like a second. Oh. It'll bum me out, but I'll be okay. Uh, we'll find more, though. Okay. Mary- I'm definitely surprised, but Surprising. I'm not bummed out. I'm just surprised because out. we always report on the show couples, whenever any celebrity couples talk about their sex life or their relationship, we tend to report on it because we are a celebrity-obsessed society and... Whatever. So they are oftentimes cited as talking about their amazing sex life, their connection. So, uh, how she, long do you give the Kim Kardashian wedding? Oh my god, people? we didn't even really talk about that yesterday. Did Kim we? Kardashian, no, and Chris Humphrey's wedding. Three oh, years. Three years. Yeah. What about you? They were uh, known each other for three minutes before they got married, right? I say two years. I was gonna say two, and then I said mm-hmm. three. Well, because they got to shoot a reality show. So you think they just did it so for a little reality? bit three. I'd say a little bit three years. Are they They're going to get their their, own reality show. Oh, now? I'm sure they will. Hello. Right. So, yeah, maybe, okay, maybe three years because you got to do that. You got to do a season of that. Right. And then probably you'll get at least a second season. So that takes up a lot of time. Right, right, right. And then you, she they just, definitely won't get a third season. Do you think she only got married like so it was like more fodder for the show? Or do you think she really wanted to get married? Uh, I don't think she cares about more uh, getting more TV time right. or anything like that. I definitely don't. I don't see that. But I do think it was like, okay, her older sister had a baby. Yeah, her sister. her younger sister got married. Yeah, that's going to be hard if you're like and there's all the these family. There's all these uh, – people say like – She's really into attention, you know, and like everyone else is getting all this attention. Like her younger sister broke off and did her own reality show with her husband and, you know, and the other one gets all this attention because she has the baby and right. like a crazy baby daddy. Right. So, and she's with this guy, though, for like five minutes and they have a $20 million wedding. Yeah, her but her second wedding. Yeah. Her her sister, though, was only she only knew um, her husband for 30 days and really? they got married. And they're still yeah. together. Yeah. You know, love is not formulaic. It can happen anyway. It can happen after mm-hmm. 10 days. It can happen after 10 years. Who knows? Yeah. Sometimes it never happens at all. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. It's totally happening. Marriage study says if you fight now, you will fight later. <gasps> Think what? you and your betrothed will stop fighting once you tie the knot? Hell no. Think again. A new study suggests that married couples continue to argue throughout their relationship almost as much as they did at the beginning. A survey was done of more than 2,000 married couples over the course of 20 years and found that those who bickered frequently in the beginning argued about as much often in the end, while those who enjoyed less conflict remained tranquil throughout. But don't be discouraged by these results. The study also indicates that discord isn't dangerous. In fact, it can be healthy. Sure, fighting can make your blood boil, but it also helps couples communicate their differences. So, um, but I think it's true. There have been a lot of studies on couples that looks at couples over years, and it's true. Like, what is there at the beginning will be there at the end. So if you fight a lot. But some couples like fighting. Like, some couples need that fighting to fuel other things. I think women shit. need that fighting. They you, love it. Oh, I, I, I've never been a fighter. Okay, I'm not saying all. Right. But and I'm not the typical, you know, yeah. that I'm not a typical woman. But, I, I mean, I just find a lot of my female friends and females, they need some kind of drama. To they, talk. You think they do with the, di- the guy? They, they create the drama? Maybe sometimes, yeah. Or maybe there is a legitimately some drama right. in there. But some of it is just like they don't want to have a boring guy. They want to have something they can go, oh, he did this. He did that. I know, and oh, I know, my God, like he's but terrible. That's just not and, who I am. That's not but who that's you are. Who but a lot I'm of saying women a lot, are. And a lot of like men that. are like that. Or a lot of men and women are attracted to each other who are yeah. both fighters. 
and they how many how many girlfriends are like oh my god i'm so in love i love him you know the relationship's great blah blah, blah. they they draw they're drawn to the negative right correct or not um no, I think a lot of my friends are not drawn to the negative. Okay, not your friends, but other women. Other we women. Won't, we won't typically, pinpoint your other friends. Other friends typically friends. Yeah, you, you talk f- about the negative when you're with your friends because that's how you process stuff. You're like, mm. everything's good and great, but however, I hate the fact that he has too many boys' nights out, which is so lame. I'm like, have your boys' nights out. But there yeah. a lot of couples fight over that. Yeah. For example, like the guy being more autonomous and not getting enough attention from him, and mm-hmm. sure, but um, yeah, I don't. I, I yes, people fight all the time about different things. Your girlfriends fight. My girlfriends, Your girlfriends fight? that you've been in a relationship. They're fighters, right? Uh, yeah, my last one. Because you're you're frustrating to date. I am kind of frustrating because I won't give you all my time. Exactly, and I don't Women take no just crap. Suck it all out of you. I won't. I won't the take time. no crap, but I won't. I won't sit there and suck argue it. with you either. Right. So you're like, talk to the. Hand I go. Right. I already said what I need to say. Uh, I don't need to drag it out anymore. So that's how I feel. You're just harsh, <laughs> and you, and and. How am yeah. I? Am I harsh, or am I just being real? She wants to have a dialogue with you about it. This is how I feel. What more do you want me to say? You just want to hear more about your feelings. About what? I want to know more like about why you... I express my feelings. Yeah. I don't understand why well, I need to... Maybe she had some other issues that she wanted. She doesn't feel like she's heard by you. We need to talk And you have more. to reinforce these women in other ways. See, Menace, you're never going to be able to be there for them in the way that they want, but you have to learn to be there in other ways that translate, that make sense for them. That isn't what the typical thing is, but you still need to learn to be there with them in some way. I I'll guess. help you in your next relationship. Yeah. Okay. Could Kate Gosselin be the next Bachelorette? What? No. Uh, who would watch that? Seriously. Kate Gosselin. Oh, uh, no. It seems like Kate Gosselin's claim to fame, <clears throat> her family, maybe she, all she has left out of this season of her show ends. She's a single mom. She didn't pull in the ratings. Her show has been canceled due to bad ratings. Mm-hmm. And she said... Uh, she because should... everyone thinks she's a biatch. Yeah. Producer Mike Fleiss of Bachelor fame was asked if he would consider Gosselin. He said, sounds like perfect for the Bachelor pad. Mm-hmm. Who would want to marry Kate Gosselin with eight kids? Could you imagine? Hell no. And then she's already like, not like she's like this sweet, tender yeah. thing and has eight kids. Like, she's kind of crazy. I right? find... Um... What's her name from Alaska more lovable than Kate Gosselin? Sarah Palin? <laughs> Sarah Palin. Is her show still on or did they cancel it? Uh, they canceled it. They canceled it for like five minutes. She's not interested. Well, it got canceled. It got canceled because of the shooting in Arizona. That was right. a big reason why it got canceled. Right, 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 right. But uh, it's funny because I, I say that she was more lovable than Kate Gosselin because uh, Kate Gosselin made an appearance on that show. Oh, she did. Yeah, and um, Sarah Palin took her. Sarah Palin took her camping with her kids, and they go, yeah, you know, they they went on some like they're out in the middle of the water. They're on some like kind of island, and um, uh, Kate Gosselin's like, we're staying here overnight, and she's like, yeah, we're gonna you know camp with the kids, all the stuff. She's like. Uh uh-uh, uh, I can't do this. Sarah Palin and Kate Gosselin got together and, and hung out on an episode with her eight kids. Yeah, Sarah Palin tried to take her camping, and then Kate Gosselin That's the was most such bizarre a thing I've such ever a heard. high maintenance biatch that she didn't want to stay out in the wilderness. That and she just it's left camping. Yeah, she left all her kids. How did they even hook up? I don't even know. That's crazy. That would be actually that's that's that blows my mind. Yeah. So Kate then, I mean, I'm not a huge Sarah Palin supporter. I, I just want to put that out there now. But if I had to choose. Between uh, Kate Gosselin and Sarah Palin, I might have to go with Sarah Palin yeah. if I had to if choose. If you had to choose, right. Yeah. Got it. But we'll choose neither. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get into some emails. All right. All right. Some of the topics include today is uh, war- <laughs> women orgasming too soon. What's wrong with that? <coughs> oh, exactly. Jesus. The <laughs> first time having sex, feeling asexual and breast play. Dear Emily, I'll start by saying your show is awesome. It's nice to have a show where people are so comfortable talking about sex and sexuality, as I wish more people were. It's very refreshing. So my main sex issue isn't my partner's fault, and it isn't the result of a lack of communication. My problem is that I tend to climax too easily, which I feel is unusual for a woman and is extremely frustrating. Minutes in, I've already orgasmed, and sometimes that's just during foreplay. Now, this wouldn't be so bad, but after I orgasm, I'm no longer in the mood 
And usually it just stops feeling good. Sex would be so much more enjoyable if I wasn't constantly worried about climaxing too soon and just have to endure until my boyfriend is done, which also breeds unfair animosity towards my boyfriend when it feels like it takes forever before he's finished, even though it's my discomfort and lack of enjoyment that makes it feel like ours. I'm not Stop sure. making it about you. I'm not <laughs> sure why I don't ever have multiple orgasms at the first one. And I've tried just holding off to the best of my ability, but it's pretty difficult. I still enjoy sex, but I feel this is causing me to miss out on its full, amazing, glorious potential. I firmly believe sex should be 100% satisfying, not this 40-50 bullshit. Maybe you have some idea what I can do since I don't know where to start. Oh, Thanks she, so much. She, oh, my God. Miera from Camden, Maine. So what? much negativity she what do you has. Mean? This well, seems she like... shouldn't. There's no problem here, Miera. Like, I think, first of all, amazing that you're able to orgasm. Um, it doesn't sound like your boyfriend's frustrated with it, but you're, you're having a lot of internal anger because you're like, I'm done and I just want to be done. And I think that, that any woman can learn to have a multiple orgasm, so they say. And I think that, that maybe you should spend some time alone practicing some more masturbation and start exploring your body more because I think if you're able to have an orgasm that quickly, you should easily be – not easily, but you should be able to train your body so you're able to have more orgasms during, during sex with your partner. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, but it's something that like a lot of women aren't, a lot of women aren't that, but if she already has it with him, right? She already has it when they're having sex. So it's not even like she has it before sex. I believe that you need to train yourself to have multiple orgasms. You can do that. There's like books you can buy and, um, like this oming retreat I'm going to. No, I mean, I think I'm going to learn a lot about this weekend that, that try during masturbation. When you masturbate yourself, try to like have an orgasm again. There's like a slight refractory period, but if you learn how to move your body in a way to have them, then I think you can do that during intercourse as well. Are you saying to go to adamandeve.com? I'm not trying to bring up our sponsor bring up at a all. vibrator? Yeah. But, yeah, but see, this is where I get a little touchy because I don't want her to be only be able to orgasm with a vibrator now and then take it away well, from... Well, she's luckily, luckily, well, first let's just talk about the good things here, Mira, mm-hmm. is that you're able to have an orgasm during sex. You know that only 30% of women are able to have orgasms during intercourse. That's amazing. Bringing in a sex toy is a great idea. I think that you should get like a bullet or the pocket rocket. Go to adamneve.com. You get 50% off most items, three adult DVDs, free shipping, and a free gift. And you should buy a vibrator that's good to use during sex because then you'll probably be able to have an orgasm no problem during intercourse if you just put on your clitoris. It's a great idea, Menace. Yeah, but okay. what's your conflict but she wants about to, toys? My conflict about toys is that you're going to – uh, train your body to be able to only orgasm in that way. Right. But she's already orgasming without it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We're not, but I'm just saying, she, I don't want her... Uh, right. Because you always take it... I. This is my feelings. That you always I take love it, your feelings. You always take it to the next level. Then you have the vibrator. Next thing you know, you have the horse cock. And then you have the, the dump truck. And then you're vacuum sealed in rubber. That's this is just my thoughts. In a fuzzy so don't even... Fuzzy, you know, it's like... Animal a, it's like a, it's like a gateway. It's a gateway. It's, it's not a, gateway a gateway vibrator um, to the next thing. I think thing. That, that she loves a vibrator. It's not. I it's think a that, gateway. I think a vibrator and masturbating on your own and learning how to have multiple orgasms. There's like so much information about there. About next it. thing you know, you need a 747 to fly into your vagina for you to get an <laughs> orgasm. Not necessarily true. Um, but I believe you shouldn't be so hard on yourself either. And I think a lot of this is in your mind when you're thinking you're like frustrated or whatever, but try to like breathe and get into the moment with your boyfriend. Cause it might naturally happen for you again, because again, I'm going to say one more thing on this is that a lot of times during sex, we tell ourselves messages like, I'm not going to orgasm again. I'm not going to orgasm again. Cause you already did. And you never have. And then you think you're not going to, and then it becomes this whole mental thing when really like, if you just